Bletchley Park is the birthplace of computer science. Lots of people say that. And the first time that I went there, um, I kind of in my head I had this picture of like maybe 50 old guys kind of wear, oh, wearing tweed jackets and yeah. doing the Times crossword and maybe yeah. doing a bit of code breaking. That's kind of what I had in my head. So then when I went there and then found out that more than 10,000 people worked there, it was a big shock for me. <laughs> and also that more than half of them were women and yeah. young women too. It was just a massive surprise. I had absolutely no idea about that. I think only six people in the world knew the whole of what was going on there at the time. Okay. And then because all of it was made secret and then no one talked about it for such a long time. So I think some things we'll never, we'll never know how they really happened. Yeah. The reasons that we believe Bletchley Park was chosen mm -hmm. were first of all it's the rail links from Bletchley Railway Station on the West Coast Main Line into Euston. Mm -hmm. So um, really good transport links into London, no more than an hour. From a recruitment perspective, they knew they needed mathematicians, scientists, linguists, the sorts of people who perhaps were professors, tutors or graduates mm -hmm. from places like Oxford and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. We're 40 miles to the east of Oxford, we're 50 miles to the west of Cambridge here, and at that time there was a railway line linking Oxford to Cambridge that ran through Bletchley Railway Station, mm -hmm. so they thought that can only be useful. And then the third reason was Bletchley Park's close proximity to a very large cable run by the General Post Office, which links London to Birmingham. And about a mile down the road, at a place called Fenny Stratford, is a, was a relay station, which was boosting the power of the signal running through that cable. And what that gave them here was very high capacity telephone, telegram, and teleprinter links. women that worked there, they were very young when they went there mostly, so like mm -hmm. 18, 20. Lots of them had just left school mm -hmm. uh, or been to university and um, uh, they kind of went there from all over the country in various different ways. I think they just had to really go back to how it was before the war, okay. so I think that was quite hard for a lot of people. Yeah. And, and some people have said, the men have said also, because they couldn't talk about what they'd done because yeah. it was all secret. So when they were going to, once the war finished, that was great, but then when they went to try and get a job, mm -hmm. they couldn't tell anyone what they'd been doing, so they had nothing on their CV. Okay. So even people who were like major code breakers, they had to go and say, I've been doing nothing during yeah. the war. Well, the saving of Bletchley Park has happened over really the last um, two decades and, okay. and a bit. The initial saving in terms of stopping British Telecom from okay. demolishing the buildings, small campaign, the reunion lunch, mm -hmm. was just the start of what okay. became a very long okay. process. We would like to think Bletchley Park is safe today, but there are no guarantees. Mm -hmm. um, we still need funding, we still have buildings that need to be restored, but it has mm -hmm. been a long process uh, over okay. a long period of time okay. um, to save the buildings. Absolutely, it's such a fundamental place in our history, mm -hmm. and it was kind of just like completely taken out of our history. Yeah. We need to now kind of put it back in, so that's mm -hmm. happening, you know, that story's being put back into our history. Uh